Okay, I'm about to get all opera house on you, okay? So, <laughs> here's what we're going to do. Have a look at this for me. Remember I told you, this is the familiar XY axis you're used to, but that's, that's laying flat. Right? We're used to seeing it up on the board, but I've, I've laid it down on the ground, okay? And now going upwards, we have this vertical dimension, okay? Because I have a volume, don't I, right? But here's the weird part. Just have a look at what's on the Cartesian plane. Tell me, what do you think the equation of that thing is? I think it's x squared plus y squared equals 16. Yeah, that's what it is, okay? That's a circle. The reason why it doesn't look exactly circular is because we're looking at it from an angle, okay? But the volume we're going to make from it is not a solid of revolution, okay? What I'm drawing up from here, and our architecture bus will love this, is um, these, these cross sections are all triangular. In fact, they're not just triangular. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to make them all equilateral triangles. Okay, equilateral triangles. Okay. Now, believe it or not, that is all the information you need to work out this volume. Okay, I will leave this all on the board so you can see the way that we did it before. Okay, again, I will repeat. You've got this circle. That's your base. Okay, uh, but then the actual volume you're creating, it's actually got straight edges up there. Okay, those are all triangles. They're, they're, not, they're not semicircles up here, as if you had a solid revolution, okay? I want you to see if you can work out... This is a... Sorry, it's minus four. See if you can work out the volume of this thing. Think about the way we built it before, okay? Think about if you're going to need to have extra diagrams to help you. I'll let you have a stab at it first before I show you the way I'll do it, okay? Good luck. <coughs> Let's begin. I need to work out volume, right? Volume equals. Now, look carefully. You can either take your slices or your shells. You can take this example, if you like. <coughs> and let's start to construct this guy, okay? I start with a limit. And then you have to choose... What's that about? What's that limit about? Come on, think with me. What does it signify? You must, must, must get this and not write down... Calculus garbage because that's what was written in the previous examples. You must know what they mean. What is delta x? What is it here? It's the width of the cross section. So you must decide which way do your cross sections go. And you can't just choose any cross section, right? Now in this case, the cross sections are all here, right? If you went the other way, you'd get a different shape entirely, okay? Maybe you could solve it that way, but this is the way it's being presented to you, right? So I'm cutting across and I'm going to get x, delta x, wide cross sections, okay? Good. Then I have to add up a whole bunch of things, right? I've already decided, because I know I'm cutting this way, that my variable will be x, okay? Now here the boundaries were 0 to h. We kind of improvise those because there was no coordinate system here. But there is a coordinate system here, right? So therefore I need to look at the relevant x values that define the volume. Where do I start and where do I end? The answer is I start at negative four and I go to four. Some people have been saying to me you start at zero because look, it's it's you know zero high when you go over there. But I'm not about height here. I'm about x values, right? That's why it's so crucial to understand why am I choosing which letters I do? Okay, negative four to four. Okay, now I've already decided <clears throat> that I'm going to have delta x in there, right? That's the width of each cross section. But now I've got the hard part. Shh. Now I need to work out the area of the cross section. Okay? So therefore, you need to see the cross section. This diagram's all right, but it's clouded by too much information. Okay? So what does the cross section look like? It's a triangle. And it's an equilateral triangle. Now that's lucky for you because that means you can work out its area, which is what I'm trying to do here. You can work it out in two ways, okay? Now, before we work out that area, I need some labeling on here, right? <clears throat> now, be careful. I've seen a lot of people mess this step up. They've gotten the right answer at the end, but they've got it the wrong way. So watch carefully and put your pens down. When I label this thing, some of you have gone the path of giving it some kind of arbitrary name for its side leg, okay? And that'll sort of do you okay, right? In something like this, it sort of works because they haven't provided one to you. But just like they provided 
I provided, a coordinate system here, right? There is also a well-defined value for the length of all these sides, okay? Now, some people um, naturally have said, well, you know, when I look at how this is lining up across this diagram, it's across the y-axis, right? It's, it's, it's up and down that way, if you like. So therefore, they call it y, right? Because it's, that's the direction it's going in. But that distance is not y, okay? It's not y because it's a coordinate system. So where is y? Forget about this triangle. Where is y on this diagram? And the answer is y means how far you are away from the origin, right? It's this distance. That's y, right? Well, that's one particular y. Here's, here's another one and another one and so on, okay? So the cross section doesn't have a base of y. It has a base of 2y, okay? All right, now I can work on this. You can either go Pythagoras. You can say um, in this triangle here, you've got y and 2y, which you can take the square root, will give you the square root of 3, y, work out its area that way. Alternatively, because it's equilateral, you've got, why am I doing that? Pi on 3, okay? You've got the um, size of the angles, so you can use trig to work this out, right? And you would get half a, b, sine pi on 3, right? And sine pi on 3, of course, is root 3 on 2, right? So either way, you get the area of this triangle to be, I think it's the square root of 3y squared. Yeah? Cool. That is what I would put in here. It's what I would put in there if it was the form that I wanted it to be in. What's wrong with that? It's in, it's in y's, and in a second I'm going to integrate with respect to x. Okay? But that's okay. How do I fix this? I use the relationship between x and y, right? Even more conveniently, I use the relationship between x squared and y squared. From here, I see that y squared is equal to 6d minus x squared, okay? Ah, I'm finally there. I can actually fill in this area, okay? It's the square root of 3 times y squared, which is this. Okay, yes, all the work, we've formed the sum of all the volumes. Now let's make the integral. Do I have any constants I can take out? I can take that square root of 3 out, right? I go from negative 4 to 4, they're the same boundaries, right? Here's my function. And now I'm actually integrating with respect to x, okay? Now you can evaluate that if you like, but come on, we know lots of properties about definite integrals, right? What will make this easier for me? 16 minus x squared, that's an even function, is it not? So I can say that should be double the area from 0 to 4. I mean, you don't have to do that, but why wouldn't you? It makes the integral so easy to do. Okay. Let's integrate. I've got 2 root 3 at the front. What's my um, integrand? Sorry, not integrand, my primitive. 16x minus x cubed on 3 from 0 to 4. 0 to 4. 2 root 3, uh, that looks to me like 64 minus 64 on 3 minus 0, lower bound. Okay. And I think this works out to 128 on 3. Okay. Which gives you this. <coughs> Okay. 